Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to church. Hope you still practice on the washing of hands, social distancing, and the rest of them. Remember that cleanliness is the hallmark of perfect standards. As you prepare and get ready for church, don't forget to tidy up his face and keep your environment and your entire self clean. The Ezra Company cares. Continue to stay clean and healthy and always make cleanliness and healthy living a practice. Welcome to service. It's good to see you again. We are glad that you are here and we believe that God is ready to do a new work in your life and your life will never remain the same. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for this moment that we have to worship at your feet. We pray in the name of Jesus that our lives will never remain the same again. That you will move us from where we are now to where you desire us to be. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Please enjoy the service. God bless you. The most high God of the greatness of his kingdom and his power there will be no end. Why don't you just lift your hands everywhere you are all around the world and just bless the name of the Lord as we bring him this song of praise every voice say Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. We honor you because you are God all by yourself. We have come again today to receive from you instructions, directions, 
We've come to receive influence from your throne and we ask in the name of Jesus, she will cause light to shine on our path in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, O oh Lord, for every year listening today, every eye seeing today, that you will cause, O oh Lord, illumination, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And you will make every man here, O oh Lord, wiser than they came in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Supernatural Father. We give you praise forevermore. We ask, O oh Lord, that at the end of this service, all the glory will be yours and the blessings, O oh God, will be ours. In Jesus' precious name we pray, Amen. And God's people say a resounding Amen. Great morning, great morning. It's a new month and we believe that God himself has a lot of plans for us. Our focus this month is on love and relationship, especially in the area of marriage. During this season, it became obvious that many relationships were not as strong as we thought. And there is nothing that I would say is totally bad about it, but that if we can sit down as husband and wife, humbly enough to know that we need adjustment in our relationship, then it will be a positive thing for us. However, if we allow the devil to take advantage of it, to mess us up, it will turn out negative. Praise God. So I want to welcome everybody again as we start another series on marriage, relationship and love. Praise God. But before we go on, I'd like you to click on the share button, invite your friends, invite your family to be part of this. It's going to be a classic and I believe that God's wisdom is available for us even at this time in Jesus' name. All right, welcome to the second service. We thank God for your life. Those of us who were at the first service, I believe you were blessed. Go ahead and inform and share with people who you think would benefit from this message. Even at this time, set up a watch party. As I always tell you, it's an evangelism tool for you. There must be somebody within your circle who does not appreciate going to church. And maybe the Holy Spirit just wants to make a seed out of this message. So go ahead right now and share, make a watch party and invite them. God bless you in Jesus' name. All right. As I said, today is... We start a series on love and relationship, especially in the area of marriage. Proverbs 24 verse 10, Proverbs 24 verse 10 says, If you fail in the day of adversity, then your strength is small. If you fail in the day of adversity, then your strength is small. Another translation says, If you fail in the day of adversity, then you are made of poor specimen. So, when I look into that scripture, it simply puts to me that, Adversities are not our curses primarily for our problem. Adversities are just a tool that is used to test our, um, our situations. In this context, we are talking about marriage. Adversities in itself is not evil. It's a testing tool and instrument. So whether it comes out negative or positive at the end, it's not based on the adversity, but based on the preparation of the marriage. So in this context, we want to ask that you understand the depth of our discussion today, that it's not enough for you to start blaming your husband, blaming your wife. It is more like saying to yourself, what can I do to make our marriage better? What can I do to make our relationship better? And that's what we want to try and dissect this month. On Wednesday, is going to be an amazing time. We'll be bringing in couples, young, old, ministers, and so on, who will be able to share with us the challenges of their life and the practical ways that God has helped them to deal with those challenges. Don't miss any of our Wednesday service. We target stories, stories. Praise God. I believe in the name of Jesus, marriages will be healed, relationship will be healed in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout a resounding Amen. So our focus this month, as I said already, is how to understand the cause of the pain in marriages and how we can handle them. So um, I, I just want to take permission to start with the women today. Then we'll move gradually as we talk to the men. Let's start with the women because for me, they are the stronger, they are the stronger people. And you will understand by the time I am through with today's message. Proverbs 14 verse 1 says, A wise woman builds her house. Another translation says, build her own home. But the foolish one 
pulls it down with our own hands. So whether your house is built or whether your house is pulled down, the scripture says it is based on your level of wisdom or level of foolishness. So let's just take careful analysis of what we um, represent in our home today. Your own will succeed in the name of Jesus Christ. Every satanic force that is against you, against your husband, against your wife, against your children, the power of God will invade your space and cancel all their plans in the precious name of Jesus. If you shout a believing amen, your own miracle in your family has started already. Somebody shout a believing amen. Praise God. So love and wisdom summarizes the power and strength of a marriage. Love and wisdom summarizes the power and strength of a marriage. And when we talk about love in marriage, we are simply saying the capacity and ability to know how to give and how to forgive. That's the summary of love. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. So when you say you love a person, it is not in words, it's in attitude. And that attitude is hidden in two things. The ability to give and the ability to forgive. Praise God. If you say you ever love a man, you love a woman, you love a family, you love an institution, and you are not able to practically forgive or give towards that cause, we need to question your love. We need to question your love. So we must wake up to that responsibility and challenge ourselves as human beings and especially as Christians that when we call ourselves the beings of love and we say the Father who gave birth to us, Another name for him is love. Then we must show it deliberately. I'll be it, show it more in your family. Because that is where true love is really tested. The place where you wake up with the same person, walk around with the same person, sleep with the same person, you are doing everything, you are naked before the person. That is where it is. This person that knows you inside out. You can't pretend for the person anymore. The person knows you too well. So I believe that is where love is really tested. If you win in the family, you will win in society. If you win in the family, you will win in the church. If you win in the family, you will win in the nation. So I want to ask that you understand what we are going to share today and take cognizance of the fact that God wants to drop things in your spirit in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout a believing amen. Because every family will go through his own challenges. Every family. Wake up and smell the coffee because... It is normal for you. Some people feel that, oh, the issues that they are facing is unique to them. No, sir. If we, by the time we come into our, 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 our Wednesday service where we'll be talking on issues, you will hear stories and you will be shocked that your marriage is even better, if possible, than many others. They will tell you how God uh, gave them wisdom to deal with the challenges that they were facing. Somebody shout a resounding amen. Praise God. All right. However it goes, it is the matured person in the marriage, you understand, that keeps the marriage going. In Romans chapter 15, if you read from verse 1 to 2, the Bible says, Now we who are strong in our conviction and faith ought to bear or patiently bear with the weakness of those who are not strong. And not just to please ourselves. Let each one of us make it a practice to please his neighbor for his good. To build him up spiritually. Keyword. Those who are strong are the ones who are patient or bear with the other person. For your marriage to work, you need to get to the point where you understand that, that the matured person, the matured set of people, especially if both of them are really matured, they can bear each other, they can forgive each other, they can tolerate each other, that marriage cannot be destroyed. Praise God. Because the people you go for counseling, trust me, those guys go through the same thing you're going through. In fact, that is why they have the capacity to counsel you. It is the wisdom that God has given them in their own trial times that they are using to give you their snippets of counseling right now. So wisdom should tell you that the people you are even taking your story to are not superhumans. They are human beings like you. And if you listen to them when they are talking to you, you will always hear examples from their stories. Praise God. 
Today, I'll be speaking to all the females in the house on the deep cravings of their husbands. The deep cravings of their husband. So I have four deep cravings for the husband, and I have about four or five deep cravings for the wife, which I will start maybe for next week or two weeks' time. But today, let's start and push through the deep cravings of the husband. Number one deep craving of an husband is respect and honor. Respect and honor. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22, the Bible says, Wife, submit to your own husband. Wife, submit to your own husband. Not another man's, your own. But of course, submit to everybody. Because there's a scripture that says we should submit to one another. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1, the Bible says, Wives, be submissive. He said, by that, you can win your husband to your side. It's a strategy. When I read it from First Peter, I found out that submission is not a way to make you look subservient. In fact, the Bible was telling you, if you listen to it very carefully, submission is actually a strategy for a win. Submission is a strategy for a win. I will break it down for you today. Because somewhere along the line, as I said earlier, wisdom and love is the foundation of victory when it comes to marriage. Wisdom and love. Praise God. So, I want the woman to ask yourself a few questions. Why is it easier for you to submit to your pastor? Especially if you are loyal to that church. Especially if you have been, maybe you, you have been connected to that church. Why is it easier for you to submit to your pastor? Why is it easier for you to submit to your boss in the office? But when it comes to your husband... It's, it's a struggle for some people. We need to talk to you about it. The reason why it's easy for some of us to submit to our pastors is because of the spiritual authority that they carry. Both for the men and for the women, they are, their, they are your spiritual authority. You saw them and you felt that they carry the word of God in them that seems to be like a light or a lamp to you. And you told yourself, I will submit to this leadership so that I can enjoy from the good of this community or this spiritual family. Praise God. Why is it easy for you to submit to your boss? You submit to your boss because of financial authority. That's why you submit to your boss. If you refuse to submit to your boss, what do you lose? You lose financial authority or financial capacity. So somewhere along the line, some of us don't like our boss. Some of us don't even see our boss as someone who can really uh, influence us or lead us. But because he's the one already paying our salary. Yes, some of them talk to us anyhow. Some of them shout at us. But every time we think about the month end, 28th, 29th of the month, something tells us don't shout back at your boss. Why? Because of that financial authority he has over you. The minute you leave that space and maybe you get another job, if for any reason it was only finance that kept you there, you would not even desire to see that boss after that day. That's the end of your relationship with that person. So, the reason why many of us submit to our bosses is because of their financial authority. But let me tell you, apart from the pastor who has authority over you spiritually, apart from the, the boss who has authority over you financially, your husband, the reason why you should submit to your husband is because your husband has a covenant authority over you, which is the highest of all authorities. Your husband has covenant authority authority over you praise god so if you choose not to submit to him you may not enjoy the covenant blessings in marriage when god set up marriage god added covenant blessings in marriage covenant blessings so some of us don't know about it because maybe covenants are not tangible peace, joy, and uh, all those blessings of the spirit that comes in marriage, uh, financial prosperity, all those things that come. Because sometimes we cannot measure them. We do not value them. You can measure cash, isn't it? You can measure cash. Your boss, you know what 20,000 is. You know what 50,000 is. You know what 300,000. You know what 500,000 is. But you just can't understand what the power of peace is until you lose it. You can't understand what the power of forgiveness is until you lose it. So I want to encourage some of you today that in as much as you respect and honor your pastor's authority over you, you respect your, your boss's financial authority over you, you must 
respect the covenant authority that God has placed over you, which is your husband. Praise God. So let me say this. I believe the reason God put the woman to play the second fiddle to man, especially in marriage, is because of naturally speaking, they have more advantage than the man. And I will show you some things today. When Bible says submit, people don't understand the weight of that. Submission is an instruction that comes because you have a choice. When you don't have a choice, you are not encouraged to submit. You are naturally submitted. So, when Bible says woman submit, it's because Jesus, God, knows what he has put inside of a man. Of the woman, rather. He knows that if the woman is ready to be herself strategically, <laughs> the man has no chance. So, in my own thinking, I feel what God is telling the, 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 the woman there is, woman, your capacity is too much. I beg you. I beg you. Help me submit to this man. Because the way I designed you, if I don't give you that instruction, you will be too powerful. You may destroy yourself, destroy your family, destroy your children. So when God talks about submission, it is because you have option. That's why we talk about submission. Somebody shout a believing amen. Praise God. So quickly, I will share for you today six advantages that women have over men. These are scriptures. I will show you. Six advantages that is very peculiar to a woman that some women don't know. That is why they are making a shipwreck of their ministry in marriage. When you understand it, trust me, you will lead your husband from the back. That is the best way to lead a person. From the back. The person will think that he has authority over you. Yes, he does. But you are the one dictating the pace from the back. And that was what God actually designed. He, because the Bible said we are all equal. So what he did was to take some qualities, a lot of them, put into the woman and gave the man who has less of those qualities to be the end so that it will balance out somewhere. Somebody shout a believing amen. Proverbs 31, 10 to 11. A whole chapter in the Bible dedicated to women because of what they carry. When you get to a woman, please read through them. But let me pick out 10 and 11 for you. The Bible says, A wife of noble character, who can find? Kapu katayaka. A wife of noble character is difficult to find. That's another word. It is not a common thing. It is rare. It is very, very rare. That's what he's saying. Women, you need to know how powerful and rare your qualities are. Who can find? God trying to interpret the woman, telling the woman, you are scarce. You are scarce. The difficulty of attainment of an object increases the value of that object. Know that very well. So, if you are scarce, then you should know how valuable you are. It's just that you have not understood that you are that powerful. I pray that at the end of this meeting today, a woman will be so conscious out there that your power is to uplift your family, to strengthen your husband, to, 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 to stabilize the society. You have not stayed in your place, but today, I launch you into that place where God has ordained for you. If you believe it, shout a resounding amen. So he said, who can find? He said, she is worth more, far more than rubies. Rubies in this context means either gold, silver, precious stones. Precious stone is already powerful on its own. But he said, far more, not more, far more than precious stones. A woman. <laughs> let's take them logically let's take them literally rather everybody appreciates precious stones everybody appreciates rubies god wants to compare he says they are not actually rubies they are not actually precious stones they are not gold he said they are worth more so if you ever value gold silver bronze as the case may be diamond rubies whatever they are he said a woman is higher than them in your life I wish women can understand. I, if I had time, I would have broken down what precious stones are and their benefits to humanity. By the time we are through with what their benefit is to humanity, you will now understand. Just put a little bit above that, the woman is like that to humanity. Praise God. So he said her husband has full confidence 
mark the word full confidence in her and lacks nothing. When a husband has a virtuous woman as a wife, the man's confidence is full. Not half, not quarter. And he lacks nothing. So one of the greatest benefits of having a woman who understands her place is that in that family, they will lack nothing. When a woman stands, a family lacks nothing. When a woman knows what God put into her, a family lacks nothing. This description is too much for any created being. Everything I've said, far more than rubies, full confidence, lacking nothing, that is not a human character. It's a spirit being character. <laughs> Supernatural divine character, which the woman does not know she carries. The only person that the Bible describes as this is the Holy Spirit that has such power. The, the Holy Spirit comes into your life and you lack nothing. The Holy Spirit comes into your life and you have full confidence under the influence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes into your life and you are worth far more than anything that you can see on this earth. So when God talks about these qualities, can we suggest that the woman does not know that she's as powerful as the Holy Spirit in a man or in a family? So, who is the Holy Spirit? And I can connect it to you. Because if you notice, the Bible described the Holy Spirit in John chapter 14. If you read 16 to 18, the Bible says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. That is the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because he does not see him and does not know him. But you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. The Holy Spirit does not leave. I will come to you. In John 16, 7, the Bible repeated it and says, But I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. And the qualities of the Holy Spirit, which the Bible recorded here, is called the helper. You need help, humans. In this new journey, new assignment, new mandate that I've given you, you will not be able to carry it out except there is an helper called the Holy Spirit. It was the same mandate that was given to Eve in Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. The mandate that was given to the Holy Spirit is the same mandate that was given to Eve or the woman in Genesis chapter 2. From verse 17. If you will, let's read it. He said, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Talking to the man. He said, for in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. And the sentence continues and says, the Lord God also said. Some other translation says, and God then said. That means there's a connection to the instruction in verse 17 to the connection to the instruction in verse 18. The Bible just finished and gave him an instruction that this is what might cause your failure in life. Do not do this particular thing. However, from the way I see you, if I don't send someone to help you, you will do the wrong thing. So, the Bible introduced the next sentence and said, also the Lord said, so what that translation says, said, and then the Lord said. So it shows that the 18 is somehow connected to the instruction of 17. So he said, it is not good for a man to be alone. I will make for him a help meet that is suitable for him. Why did God bring an helper for the man? Because God gave him an instruction and God wanted to be double sure that that instruction will be followed to the letter. So God said, I'll bring you an helper who will help you with this mandate that you don't fall from grace to grass. So the woman came as a result of the instruction or mandate that God gave the man. And God also said, even though I have given you this mandate, it is not good that you be alone. Because I'm going to leave sometime. I'm going to go back to my place. And when I go back to my place, before I come back every time in the cool of the evening, you need someone who will be helping you. 
or else you will fail in this instruction I just gave. But let me tell you why it worked. I sense that the woman, just like many of us today, women, are failing. That was what Eve also saw and failed. God gave Eve an assignment. You are here to help this man, God. Little wonder it was the woman that was close to the tree. It was the woman that Satan or the serpent met. The woman must have known that that was what God called him to do. To protect the man from this evil tree. However, the woman did not know her role. Her role was to help. She would have known more if she had understood that she was an helper. Something tells me in my spirit that there is fire in this place today. That the woman does not know what she carries. Something tells me that God's grace is available there today as you are watching me. On your phone, on your laptop, on your TV. If you are the woman in that house, I want you to rise up. There's an instruction in my spirit for you right now. I sense the fire of God in this place. Lift up your right hand, woman. I want to pray over that hand. A desiring fire from the Lord. A refining fire from the Lord. Concerning your ability that has been latent all this while. There is a burning desire right now. I can sense it in my fingers. And there is no distance with God. I pray in the name of Jesus. Lift up your right hand. Lord, let your fire. If you are in that sitting room, in that office space, wherever you are. Please stand behind that woman because there's an anointing that is coming out from this from this from this relationship right now. There's an anointing. I sense the fire of the Lord in my bones right now that will ignite, oh God, the next level of spiritual authority that this woman has. I, I just want one or two people to be an usher right there, right now, for that woman in that house. That married woman in that house. Be an usher. Masse Katayaba. Husband, you can do that. Masse take a father in the name of Jesus Christ. As I release grace, oh God, over these ones, oh God, right now. Let your fire envelop them. Let your fire envelop them. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Lay your hands on your head, woman. Lay your hands and begin to pray in the spirit. There is a new revival in your spirit to take over your space, in the market space, in your own front, in the government. There are some of you that God is releasing to the place of your inheritance. In the name of Jesus, I release fire. I release fire. I release fire to ignite passion for the next level. For the next level. For the next level. In the name of Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. I see it. A new season just opened for that woman. A new season just opened for that woman. Receive grace. Receive grace. Receive grace. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. All the women in the house shouted, believing, hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> oh God. All right, let's quickly run through the six things I talked about. The six advantages that you as a woman have. And as I pray, when you connect with it, just begin to pray in the spirit. Just begin to pray in the spirit. There is something I sense in the atmosphere that God wants to change concerning you as a woman. Hallelujah. You are going to take your place in the city, in your family, in the society, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Number one, a woman is more beautiful. <laughs> a woman is more beautiful. Women are far more beautiful than men on the average. You can look around you right now, wherever you are. There is no need for me to argue. My wife is a champion beauty when it comes to me. So I, 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 I know, even without being in your houses right now, I mean, husband, look at your wife very well. Is that woman beautiful or, or what? Women are averagely more beautiful than men. And I'll tell you why. An ugly man, actually, 
is not, um, doesn't make any difference. When men are ugly, we can even joke with it. Have you not noticed how people joke with it? It doesn't make any difference because most of us are ugly. In, the, in other words, at least, when people say beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. So, the truth about that, when, when men are ugly, it's almost like commonplace. So, it doesn't stand out, doesn't make anything. I'll tell you the truth is, that is why we are comfortable. Comedians are comfortable to talk about men and their ugliness. It's not because of anything. It's because we plenty. Hallelujah. Women, on the average, are beautiful. You will hardly hear a comedian talk about an ugly woman. It's almost impossible. Why? Because ugly women are very scarce. Very, very scarce. That is why you hardly talk about them. They are not common. The truth is, they are not common. When you see an ugly woman, she will stand out. Because there are not many. But if you see ugly men, it's a group. So we are all laughing at ourselves. We are just working together. It doesn't matter. So you need to understand, women, that God was careful to make sure that you are beautiful. Nobody should tell you as a woman that you are ugly. Because the way God did it, you were made from already refined products. Man is a refined product. You were made from a refined product. So you are gold. And the Bible says you are far more than ruby. So let me advise all men. If you have a beautiful wife, even if you won't allow her to influence you in any other thing, please allow her to influence you with her beauty. Let your children resemble your wife. If there is anything you want to keep to yourself, don't keep your beauty. Don't transfer your so-called beauty. So-called. I'm talking about the average man. It's not all men. So I, I, I am grateful that my child looks more like my wife. Praise God. Number two, she can easily multitask. She can easily multitask. Women have the inherent ability to do many things at the same time in a coordinated manner. They easily multitask. When they want to do things, um, you would be wondering if there is something like an engine walking behind them. If you are not married, you might not understand what I'm saying, especially if you are not close to your mother. But for those of us who are either married to strong women or, or, or are children to, to powerful women, you would have noticed it, that they multitask easily. I tell women, one day, just pretend that you have something important to do so that it must be that that day the man is not going anywhere so that you can leave the kids with him, leave the children with him. It's an amazing experience for any man. It's an amazing experience for any man. You can only imagine it. You cannot understand the weight of it. One child can confuse a man. A woman hardly sleeps until the child sleeps. A man will be afraid that I might sleep off. And this child will just crawl away. So the man is sleeping with his eyes open. <laughs> Women will be cooking, will be making phone calls, gisting, write, reading a book, and taking care of the wife and the children at the same time. Um, oh, it's amazing. This is not thought. This has experiences that you will see. A woman must understand that you look, for you to have that kind of power, that means your sensory organs are powerful. <laughs> you don't know. Your sensory, they are powerful, more powerful than man. When you know you are that powerful, you should know why God was giving the instruction for you to submit. <laughs> you should know why. It's like um, these films that you watch, like uh, Spider-Man, all the superheroes films. If they are not begged to be humble, to subject their powers, they will destroy the world. That's the way I liken an average woman who understands her power. They call it power under control. That's what submission is all about. You can't have these qualities Beautiful, multitasking, above the average man, and you don't know what you carry. Number three, she's an incubator. She's an incubator. Women are designed to multiply every seed that is given to them. They are seed receptors, but they never give you back a seed. Whatever you give them, the minute it enters into their space, especially their womb space, it's multiplied. It's multiplied. 
So you need to understand how they do these things. When you give them a seed, they give you a baby. You give them small money, they give you a pot of soup. You give them little things. Before you come back, the things just change. How powerful are such people? They never return things to you the way they are. In the parable of the talent, you will see there. The people in front, the one that they gave five and the one that they gave to them multiplier, liking those kind of people to women. The one that went to hide his own, I liken him to a man. Why? Because the woman has the capacity to multiply anything that you give to her. The only one thing I will give, watch what seed you give to her. Be careful that you don't give negative seed. Because it's the same thing. Whichever seed you give to her, she'll multiply it. So as a man, you must be careful. The kind of seed. When you give her anger, you give her resentment. I pray she doesn't multiply resentment to you. Because it's pressed down, shaking together, running over. Praise God. That is why they said something about the woman's heart. It's a deep well of secrets of pain. If a woman is ready to deal with you, nothing you carry, she will deal with you. So I pray we don't fall into such women and we pray we don't give such seeds to our women. You are beautiful. We appreciate you. You are glorious. We honor you. Praise God. Number four. Women have a very big art. Women have a very big art. They are more accommodating than men. Women are more loving naturally than men. Praise God. They housed another human being for nine months and they were still begging the human being to stay. Nine months without house rent. They were there. Carrying the human being up and down. If you insult that human being, they will fight you. The human being is not paying rent. The human being is sucking their blood, eating their food, doing everything. So sometimes you, you see women, they make you laugh sometimes, isn't it? When they are eating and eating and eating, I say, ah, is the, is the child? They'll say, yes, it's the child. <laughs> I, love, I love pregnant women. Look, I tell every pregnant woman, when you are pregnant, it's an opportunity. Do the laziest thing you can do on earth. Your man is there to carry your leg. Do every, when your body is not paining you, say it's paining you. Say it. Let them come. The thing that you did not enjoy from there because of their distraction when you are pregnant. I know some men are still foolish not to understand the difference between a pregnant woman and a woman that is not pregnant. But when a woman is pregnant, it is advisable if you can carry her, be carrying her everywhere. Help her. Yeah, sometimes some of them stretch it. Well, it's only for nine months. Manage it. Praise God. After nine months, they go back to whatever they were doing. And the truth about it, they will not still rest. A woman who understands her power. <laughs> God bless women who understand who they are. God bless you all over the world that you carry grace and you understand that you are powerful. And I pray in the name of Jesus, you will not lose your power. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout a believing amen. That's why, woman, it's your duty to help a man see all the angles of a solution. Your heart is very big. Your duty is to help men to see all the angles of solutions. You can see things easily than men. And I'll tell you why. Don't be too in haste to join your husband to take rash, brash decisions. Because of their uh, lack of ability to only analyze things from logical perspective as a man we are averagely not all men but averagely or more than average men are logical in their approach to things so when they have thought through it they just want to take action immediately as a woman no you have a better perspective even though you are more emotional and i want you to listen to this even though a woman is more emotional and a man is more logical the way it works is that logic can be learned more than emotion. Emotions are difficult to learn. If you have been trained by it, if you have grown with it, to change it sometimes because it doesn't have basis sometimes. That's almost like I just feel like, I just feel like what actually costs most of our emotions are our backgrounds, our DNAs. Do you understand? The things, our personalities formed all those things. The growth patterns we had, our fathers, our mothers, the things we've heard over time. It has determined a lot about our feelings right now. So it has a stronger root in our human consciousness. That's why they said, 
It is the brain, the, the subconscious brain that deals with the emotional part. It is the conscious brain that deals with the logic part. What am I trying to say here? A woman has more perspective naturally than man. Why? Because logics can be learned. Emotions is difficult to learn them. So the emotions come to the woman naturally. She can learn logic. She can learn it. By just giving a few thought patiently to anything, she can learn it. But it's almost impossible for a man to change his emotion or to learn emotion. Because emotion has no basis sometimes. So it simply means that a woman has a wider perspective. If she sits down a bit, she's naturally emotional and she can think because logic can be learned. A man has a smaller perspective, is naturally logical, but learning emotion is difficult for men. It's difficult for a human being. What you are is what you are at that point. So as a woman, have this in mind. That because you have that advantage to have both logic and emotions more than men, don't be in a haste to try to support every act of your husband that he feels he must do at a particular time. Whether it comes to finances, whether it comes to relationships, as the case may be. Try to, with a unique tone of voice, explain to him what you feel. We always say that. A woman will tell you, I don't feel this is right. Why do, don't you feel it is right? She will say, I don't know. A wise man will always slow down a bit to question his analysis more when a woman shows such concerns. It's just normal. If you don't learn it by what we are saying to you today, you will learn it by experience. It's normal. So a woman must understand that part very carefully. Don't be in a haste to support your husband in wickedness. Your husband comes, talk to you about the office and everything. You want to... And you see, the devil is very smart. That's what he has used to destroy. When your husband's bring, your duty is not to join him, to start cursing that boss, start cursing that person in the office. No, your duty is to make him see perspective. Relax him, give him a cold shower, give him food to eat, and try to make him see what would have happened. What would have happened? Firstly, always validate his pain. When you have validated his pain, then you begin to, oh God, God give our women wisdom for communication. Paro koto sotayaba. Because I believe that's what God gave you those words for. That's what God gave you those words for. Then you not be, make, um, make him see the different perspective of the issue. Remember Nabal and Abigail. I pray that you will be like an Abigail. Who was the cover or the wise person to the foolish Nabal. Don't jump into such conclusion somebody shouts a believing amen in first corinthians chapter 11 verse 3 the bible says but i want you to realize that the head of every man is christ and the head of every woman is the man and the head of christ is god this is why men are logical they walk with invincible materials Women walk with visible materials. The Bible says the head of man is an invincible Christ. But the head of the woman is a visible man. So men, do not blame the woman that she has perspective. Christ is her head. Do you understand? Who is invisible? You are her head also. Who is visible? So she has two perspectives of issues at every point in time. But guess you, you only have one perspective. Christ is your head, invisible. That is why sometimes you cannot understand physical things so much. So why are you this emotional? You will see the man. Why are you this emotional? She's emotional because she has you and Christ as her head. But you have only Christ as your head. So slow down a bit. You are working on 50% autopilot. She's working on 100. So calm down and listen. There's something she has that you may not have. I wish Nebali understood this. It wouldn't have been that foolish. I pray in the name of Jesus. Every foolishness in your space is cancelled in Jesus' name. Number five, they attract favor easily. Women attract favor easily. If a male and a female are both equally qualified for a job or for any venture, the woman will most likely get that job. Why? Men are naturally attracted to women. Men are naturally attracted to women. We like women because of their fineness. Because of their beauty, because of their excellent nature. 
It is not the fault of the man. It is just something the man has been wired to see. So men naturally like women. Women emotionally and sentimentally like women too. <laughs> so women have this advantage of attraction. By default, a man likes a woman. By default also, a woman is sentimentally and emotionally connected as a supporter to every other woman. You will hardly see a man standing for another man in that context. When you say that man is not working, the man, the man will say, let him go and work, let him go and work. A man has little or no leverage for another man. He feels this man is lazy. But a woman, the minute a woman is subjected other women to sympathy, emotions, they'll tell you, you don't stand against that. I watched a social experiment that the company did online. You can go Google it. They wanted to see why or how people responded to the maltreating of genders. So a man and a woman were working together and they showed where the man <laughs> was being beaten by the woman. You know, that, that scenario is very rare. But they now did it as a social experiment. As the man was, as the woman was slapping the man, you're stupid, you're crazy. The man was just hiding himself, hiding himself. And they were beating. Nobody stopped. People, some people were even giggling. Some people were giggling. As he was beating the man, everybody was just looking. Nobody went there to stop that fight. They felt the woman had the right to beat the man. That is what I... <laughs> you understand what I'm trying to talk about? People just feel like, yes, now I'm good for this man. He must have done something terrible to this woman. Beat him. That's what they were doing. You can check it out. They now reversed it. <laughs> the, womb, the man had not started beating the woman. He just dragged her. And wanted to start punching her. If you see the way men came into that situation. Before women even came. Men were already there. Hello guy. Why are you beating her? He said leave me alone. The men stood and they pushed him. Some women came. Men. That was a social experiment. You should know by now. That we women are more attractive. They attract more sympathy. By default. Why? It is God that put it there. Somebody shout to believe in amen. It's God that put it there. Number six. They have more internal strength than men. They have more internal strength than men. Women have more internal strength than men. And I will explain. Just with one illustration. When a woman is sick, <laughs> all of a sudden, the man becomes sick or the children become sick, the woman gets well instantly. This is not ASA. Go check it out. Except it's a terrible sickness, maybe a terminal or something. <laughs> but even with that one, the woman will still be concerned. <laughs> hope, hope my husband is okay. Hope my daughter is okay. You will see them, they are so concerned. That thing gives them natural strength to get up. It has happened to me once or twice. My wife is not feeling fine. She hardly even goes sick. Husband, think about it. Think, think, think right now. Between you and your husband or your wife, who goes sick more? <laughs> my wife hardly goes sick. I've not seen my wife sick more than two, three times in my entire life. But for every time she's down, when you become sick during that period, she will wake up and begin to do the things that will make you better. Where did that thing come from? Woman, it was God who put it there. Somebody shouted, believe in amen. It was God who put it there. Oh my God, we have so much to talk about today. So, <laughs> and I believe you've been blessed today. So in my opinion, let me say this. It will be tragedy, double tragedy. If after all these qualities and more, God in his infinite wisdom gave the man or the woman more than the man. After all these powerful qualities, now makes the woman the head of the home. Trust me, it's disaster. It's slavery. The man is gone. So what God did, just like I said in the beginning, was to do a division of labor. This one carries all the internal qualities. This one is giving the head so that it can control this woman so that she doesn't scatter. Woman, you can scatter. A dangerous woman can scatter. The reason why God brought you to be subjected to the man 
is because God knows what it, de what it deposited inside of you. If there is no control, if there's no palliative, the world will be a disaster. You are too strong. That is why he said to you, submit. It's only people who have options that are told to submit. Praise God. So to help man, in Genesis chapter 3 verse 16, the Bible now says, To the woman he said, I will sharply increase your pain in birth. And your desire will be for your husband. And he will rule over you. Your desire will be to your husband. And he will rule over you. Now, if you understand this, you won't fight. You will know that you are actually the leader. However, God gave you the ability to lead from the back. So your power of leading is to influence your man's decision. Can I give you some tricks of how to respect your man and lead him from the back? I will just list this out because of time. Have you been blessed today at all? Praise God. Number one, don't run him down in public. Don't run him down in public. A man's ego is one of the greatest assets he has. If people run him down outside, you please don't run him down inside. Because with all the affirmation things I said, a man by default should be the one that is disgruntled or the one that is insecure. But you notice that a woman will always feel she's one that is insecure. You are the most powerful. You shouldn't. It's not your character. It's not in your nature by God's design that you should be the one that is insecure. In fact, it's the insecurity sometimes that make man behave the way. All the stories we hear on tabloids, on the internet right now, it's insecurity in man. Your duty is to manage that insecurity. By doing what? Don't run him down. Don't run him down. Number two, B is number one cheerleader. B is number one cheerleader. Let him feel he is the only champion in your life. You know the truth? Every man wants to meet up with the expectation you have about them. Every man wants to meet up with that expectation. So B is number one cheerleader. Let him feel it. That he is the only one. You can protect him, die for him every time. With that, you are leading him. You don't know. These are secrets to leading a man. Be his cheerleader. Don't run him down. Number three, let him feel more important than every other member of your family or anybody. Whether your pastor, your father, your mother. There are no basis for comparison really. But if for any reason he wants to compare, don't let him. Don't give him the opportunity to compare and place himself on the second. No. You know that he, most likely you are, he is the last person you met in the, in the, in the journey. You met your father, you met your mother, you met your siblings, you met your cousins. You even, some of you even met your pastors before your husband. So now your husband comes into the space and by default, he knows that he's supposed to now take over and become number one. Listen, be deliberate about making him number one. That's the way to lead him. Be deliberate. Don't, don't assume. Make him that number one. Because somewhere inside of a man, he knows that he came into the party late. But he also knows by God's design, he's supposed to be number one in that marriage. In your life. So don't be careless about the facts. You are with your husband. You are always talking about your relation. You are talking about your mom. Talking about your dad. Every time you are talking about your pastor, that's even the worst part of it. Oh, did you do this, pastor? Oh, no, no, no. Calm down. Don't worry. Don't worry. Not even now on social media where people are really fighting against your pastor. We know your pastors are powerful. We know they are good. But the truth is, your husband is better. And you must not that. Because that is a very scary part for him. Help him. That's the way to lead him from behind. Number four, discuss your decisions with him before taking it. Discuss your decision with him before taking those decisions. It's wisdom. It's wisdom. Discuss your decision with him before taking those decisions. You know why? Let him feel like he's the one who gave you the icing on the cake. If a man feels that way concerning any of your decisions, he will back it up with his blood. You know where many women fail? They want to be the head of the home. They want to be the one that always... That is where Mother Eve failed. God told her to go and be an helper. She went there and started discussing with the serpent. It wasn't your business to discuss with the serpent. Your business was just to go and be an helper. Do you understand? Go and be an helper. Sit down with Adam. When it's time for that challenge to come... Tell the serpent, I am not the head of this house. There is somebody called Adam. Let me go and call him. Because she chose not to do that, that's the problem we are all facing. Give your husband his space. Honor him, respect him. Praise God.
when that decision becomes fruitful, it's the family that benefits from it. It's not just your husband. Somebody shout a believe it, amen. I will stop here today, and I believe you've been blessed. Let's celebrate Jesus together, hallelujah. Can we rise up on our feet and just pray together? God, you are faithful. God, you are faithful. Go ahead and just thank him for who he is and what he represents in your life. Go ahead and pray. Thank him for another opportunity. Thank him for another opportunity to be called his son. God, you are faithful. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the throne. Hallelujah and on to you. We lift our voice to say you are the Lamb upon the throne. Lift up your hands and honor him who deserves all the glory, all the honor. As women, I want you to lift up your voice to heaven and say, Lord, today we come before you. Let your mercy rule over us. Let your hand rest upon us. Let your wisdom be a part of our DNA from today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's pray for that person who is saying, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need your help so that I can manage my own better, whether as a man or a woman, so that I can manage my children better. I can manage my nation better. The wisdom of the Lord comes into your life when you allow him to lead you. Today you are saying, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. I want you to give me the ability to live for you. Can you place your right hand? on your heart as I pray with you. Heavenly Father, thank you for your son. Thank you for your daughter. I ask in the name of Jesus that even at this time as they have accepted you in their hearts, let grace fly, find expression in them. They've believed in you and they confess that you are Lord over their life, over their entire being. Receive them, O Lord, in the kingdom in the precious name of Jesus. And from this day henceforth, empower them by the truth. Because your word is truth, it will lead them, O Lord, in the way that they should go. Thank you, Supernatural Father, for this one's life, in Jesus' name. Praise God. If you just made that commitment concerning your salvation, I'd like you to send new creation to the number that is on your screen right now. I believe our pastors are there to get back to you and to lead you in this newfound faith of yours. We believe that God's word is available to help you grow in the things of the Spirit. Please do not hesitate. Send um, new creation right now to that number. The Lord will help you and do you well in Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless you. Let's celebrate God for this wonderful opportunity that is given to our friends to meet with him today. I appreciate God for that. It's the best miracle that has happened to them. All right, quickly at this time, I want us to pray. I want us to pray. I want you as a woman to pray for wisdom, to take your strategic place in your family. I want you to pray for wisdom, to, play, to take your strategic place in your family. And you know what that strategic place is? To lead from behind. Remember the four points I just mentioned, to lead from behind. Begin, open your mind. Open your mouth and begin to declare that God will give you grace to practice those four things that I just talked about. To be a cheerleader. To celebrate him at all times. It's a leading strategy. Go ahead and pray for yourself as a woman. In Jesus' precious name we pray. I want you to pray this very important prayer. Against every form of intruder. Spiritual intruder, emotional intruder, sexual intruder, financial intruder. I want you to evict them by the finger of the Lord. I want you to begin to pray. Every intruder in my mind, in my marriage, in my family, in the name of Jesus Christ, I evict you by the finger of God. Go ahead and pray that prayer. I stand today on the covenant of God's word and I evict you from my family. I evict you from my schemes. I evict you from my space in the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to decree and declare that God becomes the head of your home in the name of Jesus Christ. That the spirit takes over everything that concerns you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Ayaba. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. I want you to begin to fortify your family by the blood. Begin to fortify your family. Every witchcraft, every negative spirit, every satanic manipulation that wants to infiltrate your family, even in this month of July, we scatter them. We fortify ourselves by the blood, by the fire of the Holy Ghost. You will be burnt. You can't be close to us. Every negative intention against myself, against my husband, against my wife, against my children, against my siblings, against my mother, against my father, against everyone that is connected to me. I destroy every negative intentions, every satanic ploy in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, supernatural father. We give you praise forevermore. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. If you've been blessed today, can you help me celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for this wonderful opportunity um, healing our homes uh, with his word. Hallelujah. All right, quickly, at this time, I'd like us to give to God. Let's give to God. Wherever we are, it's time to release our seeds to God. If you are giving your tithes, you're giving your seeds, you're giving for benevolence, uh, please, let's go ahead and do it. Do it now. If you've done it within the week and I've not prayed with you, as my custom is to release you into that level of benefits as a past partner with God, I want to pray with you right now. Wherever you are, you can stand up, you can sit down, you can put your hand on your heart, you can put your hand on your screen. I just want to release the favor and the power of God over your finances right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray over your children that these ones, oh Lord, have chosen to be partners with you. Week in, week out, month in, month out, they have been here consistent with the seed in their hands concerning your kingdom and the evangelism of your word. Lord, I pray today in the name of Jesus Christ, because they have chosen to do this, oh God, let the heavens be rent on their behalf in the name of Jesus. I decree supernatural ideas, I decree supernatural revelation, even in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Enjoy help from heaven in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because this week from Monday to Friday, we speak life for you, we speak prosperity for you, we speak favor for you. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. And God's people say a resounding amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right, the rest of us, let's go ahead and bring our offering. Let's go ahead and bring our offering. Praise God. It's wisdom for you to always generate the grace of God through an exchange. It's wisdom, pure wisdom, to give to God at such a time as this. If you're true with your offering, let me pray over it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your daughter. Thank you for your son. Who, O oh Lord, at this time has released, O oh Lord, from that which you've given to them. This token as their love and trust for you, I pray. In the name of Jesus, that Lord, you will cause light to shine on their paths. In the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, supernatural Father. In Jesus' name we pray. And for that, who, that person who is not able to give at this time, Lord, I pray that your mercy will find expression in their life. That as they contact grace this week, let, O oh Lord, their bands be filled. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to welcome those of you who are worshipping with us for the very first time. If this is your first time in this treasure house, I want to welcome you. And I thank God for you that you are joining us today. Wherever you are, we are grateful that you joined this treasure house. The place where God makes us what he originally created us for. That's what we believe. And please, if this is your first time, we'd like you to send the word guest to that number that is just scrolling by your screen. Our pastors will be there to give you information concerning our church so that you can be part of it. Next week, our academy is starting. Our academy is our in-house leadership training school where we train people for leadership both in the land and our salvation as we go to heaven. So please, if you want to be a part of that particular academy, please send your, your interest to that number also. Our people are there. Or you can go on our website to register. If you go to our website, www.istreasurehouse.org, you will get the, the, the academy is there. The form is online. Just go there and fill, and um, we'll get back to you so that you can be part of the next set that is starting this Saturday that is coming now. Praise God. Somebody shout a resounding amen. All right, finally, I want us at this time to um, distribute the materials for our communion it's our deliberate action to activate that which god has put inside of us deliberate action to activate it every one of us as we partake of this communion our marriages will be better our relationship will be better our children will be better our children will be better in the name of jesus christ so i would like the fathers the mothers please let's distribute the communion as i invoke the power and the grace of god over your life 
in Jesus' name. All right, if you have it, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I bring these materials before you. They are ordinary materials, but by your power and your grace, they become supernatural. As your children partake of it, O oh God, I decree that everything that you have ordained for them by destiny will locate them in the land of the living. They will not die. They will live to declare your counsel in the land in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And I also pray, O oh God, that whatever has afflicted them before today, I decree as they partake of this communion, every affliction is dissolved in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, supernatural Father. We give you praise forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. And God's people say resounding, Amen. All right, go ahead at this time and partake of that communion. As you partake of it, sicknesses are disappearing from your body, healing all around your space in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for being a part of our service. We pray in the name of Jesus that this week will speak well for you. Join us on Wednesday, as I said earlier, for stories. It's a time out where we'll be talking to couples concerning how they have been able to maneuver the challenges of their marriage young couples older couples you just you just you just be blessed get your family and friends in and let god give us the victory in jesus name see you on wednesday
mighty God. Wow, that was a wonderful moment of the world. The needs of a woman. I believe that as we take heed to this word of the Lord, our homes, our relationships will never remain the same again. God bless you. Please have a great week ahead. Thank you.